Hello, everybody, and welcome back once more to Jill o Lantern First Slice. I am the Outback Al. I'm Yin and Young. I'm Chibi Noob. And I'm Jiren Cosplay. And we are playing back through First Slice. Uh, if you haven't seen some of the other times that we've been replaying this so far, uh, the creators of this have a Kickstarter going to fund their third chapter of this, Jill o Lantern: The Final Cut. So if you want to go check that out, link is in the description below for the Kickstarter and their itch.io page if you want to check out this game for yourself. Maybe make some different choices than what we're doing. So far, we've been replaying this first chapter. Uh, it's been mostly the same. We're seeing one or two different options here that maybe weren't there before, and we've been seeing some improvements to the game. It's streamlined a little bit better. Uh, the dialogue is a little bit better, and we're going to see if that continues or whether everything falls off. We have no idea. But yeah, uh, investigator asking a thing. Viv, what's up? Maybe later. I'm all right. I'm, it's just, I just realized I didn't meet Candy the first time around. When I was alone at the party, they never approached me. Then again, they would have had their hands full with all the chaos going on. But still weird how you can just miss someone for forever. Someone so important. A lot of stories go untold that way, but let's focus on what's actually happened next. Right, sorry. Where was I? I believe Jill had just issued her ultimatum. Deal? Hey. Or no deal? Ooh. Hey, you may have given all your drunken buddies a second chance for them to waste, but you're doomed to a fate way worse than anything they're gonna get. Unless, of course, you decide to stop being a pain in my ass and play nice. No. Huh? I said, no. <laughs> do whatever you're going to do to me, but I'm not going to help you. I know that most of the assholes at that party probably don't deserve to live. Hell, statistically, some of them won't even survive to graduation anyway. But I have to believe that there are some good people mixed in there as well. People who do deserve to live and are going to make something of their lives. Yeah, I'm probably an idiot for not giving you the book and saving my own skin before. And I'm definitely an idiot for coming out here alone. But I'm an idiot who did what she thought was right, and I'm going to die as that idiot. I know that doesn't count for shit in this world, but it's worth something to me. I think I tapped it too quick. And here comes the part where the bad guy calls me an idiot for being noble. You've done that enough already. Huh. I can respect that. Wait, what? Careful of your leg. But, yeah. Value your community over yourself? I definitely get that. You... You're fucking with me, aren't you? No, I mean it. We demons are very community focused. I absolutely get where you're coming from. I mean, I do the same thing for my community. Any demon would. Huh. Okay. So, does that mean you're not going to kill me? What? I wasn't gonna kill you. Huh? I mean, that'd be kind of kind of productive, don't you think? I. What? <laughs> Oh, we're back to that again? Sorry. Wait, no. Why am I apologizing? You just said you were going to give me a fate worse than the others or something. No, I didn't. But you did. You just did. I heard you say it. <laughs> Sorry, that was an inside thought. No, what I said was you were doomed to a fate worse than anything they're gonna get. I never said anything about me dooming you. But you said it like... Look, just... Assume I know nothing and explain it to me from the beginning. Okay? Fine. In the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> At the start of your universe, there was nothing but a bunch of what you call hydrogen and... I meant why I'm doomed. Oh, phew, good. That cuts down on a lot. 
Is it just this stupid? Or does it think I'm stupid? Both. Okay, first off, the spell you cast didn't send you back in time or whatever you thought it was going to do. Well, not exactly anyway. It created a small bubble of reality that's going to keep resetting back to the same point every so often. Probably from where you started when you cast it. You mean, when we started? No, when is what time it is. Where is the point we were at on the timeline where you screwed everything up? Do you seriously not know basic temporal terminology? This is starting to give me a headache. I don't know. I'm following it pretty pretty well. So basically, I created a time loop? Exactly. It's Groundhog Day. Or Happy Death Day yeah. since it's your birthday. Yeah. But there is a very limited range in which we can move around. We only have about... <laughs> um, hang on. I'm never very good with human measurements. About 300 yards? Yeah. Wait, how'd you know that? I can kind of feel it, I think. I didn't notice it until you pointed it out, but it's like the world feels smaller all of a sudden. I don't know exactly where I am. It's weird. Huh. Well, I guess that makes sense. The spell is fueled by your life force, after all. Yeah. Wait, what? Did you think the energy to power the spell just comes out of thin air? I'll admit, I hadn't given it much thought. Yeah, well, you probably should have done that before you cast such a powerful spell. This time loop is going to keep draining away your life until it breaks. Or you don't have enough juice left to power another loop. Hang on. What do you mean by draining away my life? Am I losing years off of my lifespan every second or something? No. You would compare it to something more like dancing. It tires you out, but if you sit down for a bit, you'll get your breath back. So, basically... We're stuck in the time warp until I don't have the strength to jump to the left anymore? Oh, I love that movie. So they have movies but, in hell. But yeah, basically. Only when you fall on this, only when you fall on this dance floor, you're not getting back up. The spell you pick drains a lot of energy to pull a reset, but it's also steadily draining you to sustain its barriers. So, what happens when I run out of power? It's powered by your life force, human. What do you think will happen when you run out? <laughs> you die. Kaputski. Well, technically, you'll spill into you'll slip into hypothermia-induced coma first, and then die. <laughs> Unless go somebody straight to your thighs. And, and then, then you die. <laughs> <laughs> Unless somebody gets real close and friendly with you real quick. Body heat is a strong measure of life force. The spell that drains you, the colder you're going to... The more the spell drains you, the colder you're going to get. I'm guessing you're already feeling some of the effects. That sounds nuts, but it does make sense with everything that's been happening. I've been feeling a bit chilly since I woke up at the party. There's no way it should be able to do that. But still... Why are you telling me this? Because I'm the only one that can save you from a slow, cold death. Rub up on me. And I will! Huh? Just as soon as you sign this. She pulled out a sheet of gold paper and handed it to me. It read, I, blank, hereby agree to assist the demon identified as Jack Hedda Jill in obtaining the witch's spell book, which she would have gotten already if it wasn't for my own human stupidity in the most efficient way possible. 
I will help her whatever way she tells me and agree to whatever term she dictates as I understand that it is for my for the good of my entire reality. Yeah. Words. In return, she will assist me in not dying a horrible, painful death as a result of my own stupid human actions and will even make a reasonable effort to keep me from dying in other ways. Wow. There is no way in hell I am agreeing to that. Oh, come on. There's nothing wrong with it. That has got to be the worst contract for anything I have ever seen in my life. We'll make a reasonable effort for keeping... Well, Sorry. you can't ex... Ah, well, you can't expect me to risk my mission for one reckless human, can you? Which she would have gotten already if it wasn't for my own human stupidity. Okay, I admit. I was still pretty annoyed with you when I wrote that, but it's just semantics. That is not what that word means. Whatever. The magic ink is already on the magic page. I can't exactly rewrite it. Then get a fresh page. I can't. I only have one piece of contract paper. I had to write you. I had to write yours on the back of the one the witch wrote hers on. Huh? I blinked at her for a second before flipping over the page. Just as she said, there was another contract written on the back. The contract was in different handwriting than the one on the other side, so presumably the rich the bleh, witch had written it herself. It read, I, the witch, hereby contract the summon demon, Jack Hedda Jill, to kill by its own hand all of the interlopers on my lake before the stroke of midnight tonight when it is to reappear before me and accept payment of her own choosing. She is not to bother me for any reason and is not to come within sight or hearing of me until the time she is to receive payment. Beneath it, in unsteady block letters, was a signature that simply said, The Witch. See? Nothing wrong with the one, with that one either, is there? I stared down at the contract and reread it a few more times just to make sure I was reading it correctly. I may not be a law student, but my mom is a lawyer, and that meant I had at least some experience with legal contracts. Granted, you didn't need to be a law student to see that the whole contract was trash, though I explained that in a slightly more eloquent way. This contract is total fucking garbage. <laughs> What? Oh, hey! There's that word you don't like. <sighs> that contract is fine. It clearly outlines what I'm supposed to do and what I get for it. Clear as mud. I dare you to find even one thing wrong with that contract. Let's look for contradictions. Ooh! How about a bet instead? Huh? If I can convince you that the witch's contract is bullshit, then you have to find some find some way to rewrite the contract to my benefit. Alright, but when you fail, you have to sign the contract as is. And you only get three chances to convince me. We don't have all night here. Deal. Let's start with the signature, shall we? Damn, I was What's hoping we were going to get some Ace Attorney stuff going on. That's what I thought. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, my God. Here it is. You didn't sign it. The witch isn't a name. And it doesn't match the other handwriting either, but, I mean, the witch isn't a name. Could be a title, though. Hmm. Who do you want to go with? Those are all good options. Honestly, uh... Do, do, do. I think the witch. Yeah. Her signature doesn't mean anything. The witch isn't a name. It's barely even a title. And there's no way for you to prove who the witch is. Even if it was the witch of Lake Shish Kebab, then you might have a leg to stand on, but even then. It's obviously the witch that summoned me and wrote the contract. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. The witch wrote the contract. Good luck proving it. 
If this is the best argument you've got, I'm not convinced. All right, well, I mean, this doesn't match. What about the handwriting itself? It doesn't match the rest of this contract or the contract on the other side that you wrote. Huh? Just look at it. Hey, you're right, it doesn't match. But wait, why doesn't it? I know she signed it. I watched her do it. What hand did she write it with? <laughs> her right. Wait, no, her left. No, wait. Let me guess. She wrote the contract with one hand and then signed it with the other. Uh, yeah, actually. Now that I think about it, that's exactly what she did. She must be one of those, um... Hmm. Amphibians? I believe you're looking for the word ambidextrous and no. Going off of this handwriting, I don't think she is. But why would she sign with her other hand then? Probably because she learned about legal loopholes from young adult novels. Yep. Huh? Did you guys read that one? Yes, I did. Mm. Love that series. Did you watch the Netflix series though? Uh, the first three episodes. Well, I mean, which one was? What which show is this? Uh, series of unfortunate events. Oh yeah. Oh. That was good. Yeah, good show. It's a common misconception that if you sign a document with your non-dominant hand, the signature is considered to be invalid. But it is valid, right? You tell me. It's your contract. Well, then I say it counts. Either way, it's evidence that she was trying to get out of the contract. That's... that's circumstantial at best. Maybe that's just how she signs all her contracts. Unlikely. But if that's not good enough for you, there's more prominent problem in the very first sentence. To kill by her own hand all of the interlopers on my leg before the stroke of midnight tonight. I have an objective and a time frame. Where's the problem here? There's no date. You were using a machete. This isn't her lake. I mean, there is no date. Yeah, there's no date. There's no date written anywhere on the contract to signify when tonight is. T it's tonight! This tonight! But how can that be tonight's... But how can this be tonight's midnight? Huh? Midnight is 12 a.m. It's the moment when one date changes into the next. I'm still not seeing the problem here. Yeah, neither were some of our professors back in school. What date is it tonight? <laughs> yeah, really though. It's Halloween, October 31st. Right, so tonight, when 11.59 p.m. becomes 12 a.m., the date will also change from October 31st to November 1st. Wait. Wait, then that would mean that midnight for the tonight specified in this contract has already happened. But, but, but that would mean that the deadline's already passed before the contract was even written. It would. But that's, that's ridiculous. Whenever somebody in the movie says midnight, it's always, they always mean the next upcoming midnight. Ugh. Enough, you're just trying to confuse me. Nothing you've said so far shows that the witch was trying to skimp on giving me the book. I could argue every one of your contradictions to her just like I did now. Blah. I can't read. If all you care about is your payment, then fine. Huh? When she is to reappear before me to accept payment of her own choosing. Mm. Yeah, and... You have to find the witch? It doesn't say that you'll get the spell book. You didn't get the book. I mean, it doesn't say spell book. This last one's kind of a stretch, but it's all I've got. The contract doesn't say that you'll get the spell book. What do you mean? It says right there, payment of my choosing. That means I get anything I want. No, it means you get to choose between at least two options. 
but there's nothing in this contract that says the book has to be one of them. But, but she knew I wanted the book. I told her that was going to be my price. Oh, well then, she probably should have written it into the contract, shouldn't she? Unless she was never going to give it to you, right? But, but! She could give you a choice between an old button and some broken shoelaces when you pop up to collect. And that would be perfectly within the parameters of this contract. I, she, you mean... Oh, just face it already. You done goofed. <laughs> she tricked you. Uh, demon? 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 <laughs> oh, she got explode. She tricked me! Whoa! I stepped back and shielded my face with the contracts as Jill literally blew her top. Well, pyro demons aren't exactly known for subtlety. How do I know that? After a few seconds, the flamethrower neat receded back into her head and the lid of the pumpkin landed neatly back in place with a soft plop. She still continued to seethe and smolder for a while, though. You done? I am going to torch that witch! Save the fireworks. She already beat you there, too. What? Check the last sentence. She is not to bother me for any reason and is not to come within sight or hearing of me until the time she is to receive payment. You can't even go within eyesight of her without violating the terms of your contract. Then I'll just have to wait until it's time to collect. And then what? You can't harm anyone holding the book, remember? Meh. But... If someone else had the book, you might have a chance. There's nothing in the contract itself that says you can't kill her. So, whoever does decide to help you better have it in writing that you can't attack her. Ah, give me that. She snatched the contract from me and pulled out a quill pen with a red feather from somewhere. What's your name, human? Vivian. Vivian Victoria Fanala. That's a dumb name. Uh, <laughs> how do you spell that exactly? It took Jill a minute to write up a new contract. Meanwhile, I kept wondering what the hell I'd gotten myself into. Literally. So that's how you came to be friends. We we weren't friends. As far as I could tell, she was just some psychotic monster. I basically tricked her into working with me. I'm sure she was angry about the contracts, but deductive logic and creative thinking are highly coveted skills for a demon. You demonstrated them quite masterfully to her twice. How would you know? You just explained it to me. She must have sought you out, because she saw you as a powerful ally. I don't think you tricked her as much as you impressed Yeah, well, she was one of the... One with the... All the power, not me. Just wanted to point out somewhere other than me, or the people that I cared about. I am so sorry. <laughs> We're almost there. But anyway, after she finished writing up the contract, she handed it back to me. The headache isn't helping right now. We're almost there. <sighs> I know. Here, how's this? The problematic contract she'd written me for me before had been scribbled out. Beneath it was a single hastily written sentence. I, Vivian Victoria Vanala, will help Jill the Demon get the magic spell book from the wish of Shish Kebab Lake, and Jill will make sure I live. Well? Better. But I'd appreciate something about you not killing my friends. <laughs> There's not enough room on the page! But, I personally, but I personally promise I'll do my best. Community and all, you know? Taking her at her word seems stupid. But she doesn't seem very clever. Either she's a, mon a master manipulator, 
Or she's being honest. Either way, it's not like I have a choice. Okay, hand me the pen. I scratched out a quick signature beneath the single sentence and handed the contract back to her. Jill gave it a quick glance, nodded, and then put the quill pen and the contract back wherever she pulled them from. She put it back where it came from. Marissa, help me. All right, let's get this witch hunt started. That's, no, just no. I like the music. Yeah. Saying, oh. Well, it's the end of that chapter. Aha, so now that you two are allies, I trust you went after the witch, but we won't know until next time. So, yeah, again, Kickstarter, itch.io page, all that in the description. Give them some love if you've been enjoying this or if you want to play it yourself and you want to see how it all ends at the end of it all in Chapter 3, the final cut. Yeah, and we'll, we're going to find out what else happened here and probably move on to the second uh, helping pretty soon. So we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like, and feel free to check out some of our other gaming videos, our weekly podcast, Anime Yay or Nay, or our parody series, Madoka Magically Abridged. See you next time!